Hi everyone, and this is the Fundamentals of Sets. And it's gonna get pretty abstract up in here. We're going to need to get into things which are quite insubstantial and philosophical. That might not help with the idea of abstract, but that's kind of the thing with abstract. It's hard to get your head around sometimes. So, what are sets? Well, a set is a collection of objects. You probably didn't need me to tell you that. However, you might need me to tell you that in maths, we call the object in a set its members or its elements. So we can talk about the members or the elements in a set. So the idea of a set is fairly intuitive. You can just see that sets exist, groups exist, but if we want to describe them mathematically, we need to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more rigorous in our thinking. So how do we describe a set? Well, there are three ways to describe a set. We can simply describe it in words, if we wish. We can describe it by listing its members. And we can represent it by a capital letter if we're going to write some equations using the sets. So, Here's an example of a set. And we can write this set as we saw in three ways. We can write it out as the set of English vowels. That pretty much covers it, A-E-I-O-U. We can write it out in the second form where we use a set of braces. So when we define a set, we use braces, those curly brackets. We do not use parentheses or square brackets. And the other option we have, as we saw, is to make it equal to a letter, so we can use that letter, and everyone knows when we use that letter, we mean that set. So the cardinality of a set is another concept which is quite easy, even though it has a big name. And this set here, set Q, has a range of elements in it, but the cardinality of this set is just the number of items in the set. We count the number of actual items in the set. There are six of them. So we can say this in a number of different ways, of course. We can say the set has a cardinality of six. We can say the cardinal number of the set, Q, is six. We can say that it's a cardinality six set. Or we could also express it in mathematical terms like a function we could say that n of q is six in other words the number of items in set q is six so the difference between cardinal and ordinal doesn't actually impose on set very much but why don't we mention it while we're here we can think about numbers as cardinal numbers, which are when we use them to count and use them as quantities, or we can consider them to be ordinal numbers when they are in some order or sequence and we need to take them one after the other from beginning to end. So when we say cardinal numbers, we're talking about numbers expressed as quantities and that's why the cardinality of a set is the quantity of elements in the set. So to sum up, the cardinal number tells us how many and the ordinal number tells us what rank. So we need to know if there are limits to our set. If you think that there's a maximum number of elements that can be in some set, then I'm afraid you are incorrect. Sets can have an endless number of members, and in this case, we call them infinite sets. A set which does have an end to its members, it has a set number of members, is called a finite set. Finite, not finite. I don't know why the pronunciations are different. So when we're making sets, we need to make sure if we're setting a rule that we have an easy way to define that set. That means we need to have a rule that can make sure we know 
is this object in or out of the set? If we can't say that for sure, then our set is not well defined. So here are some sets that are not well defined. The set of good tennis players, the set of beautiful movie stars, and the set of large objects in the solar system. So why are these sets not well defined and how could we improve them? So these sets are not well defined because they are not objective. They are subjective, which means they are based on what people might think or feel about them. Objective things are based on the quality of the object and everything in maths should be objective. There should be no subjectivity in mathematics. So everything you do, we might say, must work in a well-defined space. So when you are creating any kind of maths really, but in particular with sets, you are creating a conceptual space. This is very abstract. You are creating a space in your mind for you to work with your ideas. And in order for your ideas to be clear, that space in your mind must be well defined. It mustn't have any uncertainties about it. So here are some examples of better defined sets. Instead of the set of good tennis players, why don't we have the set of tennis players that are currently ranked in the top 100 in the world? Instead of the set of beautiful movie stars, let's have the set of movie stars who have won an award for most beautiful or sexiest, etc. And instead of the set of large objects in the solar system, let's have the set of objects in the solar system that have a mass greater than 10 to the 22 kilograms. These are more, more objective, as you can see, by they are based on things that we can definitely say yes or no this tennis player is or is not in the top 100. This movie star has or has not won a certain award. This object does weigh or does not weigh 10 to the 22 kilograms. So we're taking out the adjectives, good, beautiful, and large. These can be subjective. And we're putting in some condition which lets us say yes or no if anything is in or out of the set we want to make. So we're going to introduce some basic ideas of sets now. Universal sets. And technically we could say there is only one universal set, the set of everything that exists in the universe. But that's not very helpful. Anytime we want to make one of those conceptual spaces where we want to think about ideas, we're going to need a set which will hold everything. The sandbox that we want to play in, in a way. We don't want anything that we might find useful to be outside this set, and that will be our universal set. So in mathematics, we might often start from the set of all real numbers, say. And so our answer, based on the rules that we are using could be anywhere along the number line. In any given situation then, the universal set is a set that contains all elements that are relevant. Even if some of them aren't used, they are at least relevant to the ideas we want to work with. So the universal set in equations is usually shown by the letter U. Now, we have to be careful when writing this because, as you will see, one of the set operations we're going to look at later also resembles a letter U, and you have to make efforts to make sure there's no confusion. So a complement set. Once we have the idea of a universal set, then we can consider the idea of a complement set. So the complement of set A contains all members of the universal set U that are not members of set A. 
So when we mark sets on a diagram or in an equation, it's typically given the prime notation. So if we have a set A, then the complement of set A will be A prime. And that's A with a little inverted comma after it. So let's just look at an example of that. So we're going to be using a simple Venn diagram, which we will be talking about in more detail later. But here we can see a space which represents a universal set U. And we can add to that a set A. So within the universal set U is some set A which is smaller than the universal set. So the complement of A, if we shade the outside blue, is A prime. That is everywhere in set U that is not in set A. And just to reiterate, set U still covers the entire space. So set A prime is the blue bit, set A is the green bit, and set U is the whole rectangular space. And if we choose to add some numbers in there, then we can represent this as a set just like the ones we've been dealing with earlier. In this case, U is a set consisting of the numbers from 1 to 9, the integers from 1 to 9, and A, therefore, the green space A, is the integers 4, 5, and 9. And in that case, A prime, the complement set of A, is simply all the numbers which are not inside that green circle, that is the integers 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and 8. So that is A's relationship to A prime, the relationship of a set to its complement set. The empty set, what is the idea of an empty set? So we need to be sure that our ideas work from the most basic level, and with that in mind, we are going to define a set which has precisely zero members, and we call this an empty set or a null set. And so we use a symbol as, well, an empty pair of braces, so a, literally a set with nothing in between the two braces, or we use in equations this symbol, which is a sort of zero, a strike-through zero symbol. So it's important to remember that this notation, a zero symbol inside a set of braces, is wrong. This is not an empty set. This set has one member. It has a cardinality of one, and that is the zero symbol. So you cannot put both of those together. It's either one or the other.